Bob, my groom name is John Howell. I run Data Experience and we're here in Thousand Oaks, which is part of the city we're in here, Westlake Village. Monday's intentionally a, a, a diverse set of material. It's a little different than the rest of the week. We try to present boot camp in as linear a fashion as possible. I don't know what a database is. I use post-it notes. Teach me how to get from there to really cool reports and, you know, whatever else, plugins and fancy stuff. And in the course of a week, and you got to start somewhere. But we, we choose instead of just starting with FileMaker, we choose to, to shake it up a bit on Monday. There's discussions about um, the concept of architecture, what what FileMaker's role is in the marketplace, data normalization theory, which most of us have never taken in college, but learned the hard way. You're probably are doing it, but don't know it. Then we talk about data modeling and and graph management, and we switch into uh, at noon. David Knight's going to be showing up talking about. Uh, project management, business analysis, and doing a case study. So we kind of get all over the board to kind of shake it up. It's highs and lows, very intense, heavy theory, and very fun, lightweight sales type stuff bouncing around so you can get a good good feeling of the diversity of stuff that's required to do this. And then we settle more into like scripting and building a database in the course of the week. And during the course of all that, we'll be doing a case study, which we'll go into later. So we'll be actually practicing these skills at night based on what you learned that day in teams and then uh, reporting back on it the next day. Data normalization is all about making your data structure clean and keeping it efficient. You don't want data duplicated. You want to know that if you, if you delete something, that that's all you're deleting. You don't want to lose information. You don't want to have to enter things twice. That's the whole point of doing this. You've got a problem person out there the person that's coming to you has something that's a little bit screwed up in how they work that doesn't make them fit into QuickBooks or it does not make them fit into ACT or something of that nature. Oh, I will be back. Really? I'll be back and I'll probably drag a couple more you know, with me. Personally, once you just settle on a method of passing multiple parameters, you start doing it all the time. And it works out pretty cool. And we're appending information, we're, we're applying business rules, we're identifying our master customer list. Things that have been driving me nuts for months, people have shown me, hey, it's just do this. Today alone, we went over custom functions. It's like, I know in an application I'm working on, I've got to start adding them, and I've been experimenting with them, but we had a terrific lecture on it this morning. What was the coolest thing I said today? Arkham. That the consistency. God, the first guy to fly. <laughs> 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 right. If you take anything away, take away the Markham concept, measurements, analytics, strategic reporting, not operational reporting, right? Data collaboration and knowledge management. You'd have your list view, your detail view, what field you want, and you sort of like marches you through it. It's like a wizard. And uh, before you know it, voila, you have a uh, application. I mean, it literally took me less than an hour to come up and I could get it on my iPhone. And uh, here it is. Here's my home page. Here's my find page, find sales. And it has those nice icons up top. I found the sales. Here they are. What did you think of the presenters? The presenters, uh, many of the same ones from DevCon, but we got uh, a much more uh, intimate setting and we were able to ask them pointed questions. If you're going to work in enterprise, you have to be a consultant, not a developer. What I mean by that is you have got to focus on the why before you focus on the what and how. The other type of, doc of diagrams that I would include into a requirements document would be your data flow diagram, which is very similar to a workflow diagram, except for the fact that you're not actually talking about people interacting with it, you're talking about the system interacting with it. By using conventions, you can be consistent in what you do from one project to another, which allows you to have code reuse, right? I love boot camp. The thing is, the thing that I like about it is it's all people who are really interested in the same thing in a fairly small setting, all dedicated to learning more about the same subject, i.e. filing and how to deploy it in the real world. Each layout is tied to one table occurrence, not a table. One table has many table occurrences, and each table occurrence has one table occurrence group. 
and there may be many layouts tied to one table occurrence. Breakfast, lunch, having the hotel room close by, and being able to at nighttime collaborate on, you know, hands-on, uh, you know, use case projects. That yeah. was absolutely fantastic yeah. as well. Layouts are always going to be based only on the anchors. And portals are always going to be based on related data, which could be any one of these buoys you see here. Your <laughs> system is growing and getting more entangled. And they haven't even finished their system, and, and their scope has gotten bigger. Technical debt. It's like a credit card. Right? You can go fast through the mall with the credit card. Just like I can go fast through here and get this function up and running. But you know in the back of your mind, right, your, your little developer conscience knows you're taking on debt. As if I copy and paste this in, I've just, I've just borrowed a little bit of time against my future self, yeah, right? Because I'm going to have to come back to that. This is not tricky stuff. This requires two things that we got in FileMaker like 8 and 5, right? Global variables and the debugger. So coalesced and all comes together in one place in a really intensive, really intensive, uh, interesting way. Storing your work. This is this is this is security before you go to production, right? Back up your work. Put it in a safe location. I have an office with seven computers. I got a server. I got another computer. I got flash drives. I'm going to burn it to a flash drive. I'm going to burn it to my server. I'm going to put it with all zipped up in another folder on the workstation I'm working on, and I'm going to upload a copy to. Uh, base camp, right? If my server crashes, I get another copy. If my house burns down, I'm running out the flash drive. If I get robbed on the street, somebody steals my flash drive, it's uploaded somewhere. <laughs> what did you take away from boot camp? I think the main thing for me is hanging out with people who so, know so much about FileMaker. It inspires me to become a better developer. It's got a loop in here that just races in a circle and, and sets a counter based on the variable. They've got 35, it's like loop 35 times, move a little more, loop 35 times, move a little more, move, and, and so, it's so fast that it's going, eh, 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 eh. but to your eye, it looks like it's going like this. And actually, I don't know that I have it in here, but I also have deceleration, so it starts sliding really fast, and it's right there, it gets to the end of the stroke, I calibrate, it's going to stop here, it's about here. Now change the use of the variable, and now use a different variable at a certain part, and, and start moving slowly. So it looks like it's, hmm, like it's putting on the brakes gently, so you don't get the slam against the wall. Five days, is, this is a really tough thing to pull off, and you know, for my money, this is easily the best private uh, training type thing that you can do for your money in the entire community, and this is a really rich community as far as resources and uh, places to get help out there, so uh, congratulations for you guys for being part of this at the same time. Uh, what it shows is a commitment to your ongoing uh, FileMaker education. This was the most useful tech brief I've ever read as far as my daily life uh, as a consultant and a developer out in the field. How's it going so far? Very well. Lots of good information, very concise, very fast moving. Uh, I saw, I've seen some excellent work that's very inspiring. It's much different than, say, DevCon. Uh, this is, there's much more interactivity. So how's your relationship diagram looking so far? Uh, it's pretty spare, but it's uh, appropriate. When a member of a group tries to open a FileMaker database, his or her account and password are passed to the external authentication server, because really that's who's handling the access here. And once that server determines that the proper credentials have been provided, it returns to FileMaker's server a list of groups to which that user belongs. This list is then compared to the group names that you set up in your FileMaker Pro database file, and the first valid match in your list is the one that is going to be used to authenticate that account. Security isn't just about protecting the data. Security is also about identifying who people are and possibly providing a more customized user experience. There's such a, a wealth of material. You know, we get to cover FileMaker from A to Z and in areas that, you know, you, you're exposed to that you never really kind of knew existed or had a chance to get into. When we find defects earlier in the system development lifecycle, we find them up here in requirements, or when we're designing, or when we're building, the relative cost of fixing the defects is, is low. However, when we get defects in testing, or when we even get into beta, the cost starts increasing. And when we get into production and we're in a maintenance state, the costs are very high and the impact to our users of resolving defects is very high.
And you can see one of the really cool things here is in this particular menu we've changed the words so that instead of using a generic term like record, which a user may or may not even understand, uh, we use a word like contact, which actually explicitly makes sense to the user in the, in the context that they're currently in. Yeah. How we usually do it, we usually just, you know, start making tables. Let's just dive in and get something on the screen so that we feel like we have something to work with. And I do think, I think it's a smarter way to, to sketch it out and think through it and talk through it and have a, a good plan in your head before you get going. The, the teamwork and doing it from the ERD and, and drawing it up was, uh, it, it was challenging because there's so many different ways to do things. So it was challenging, but it was, it was very informative because we learned a lot. Right. We all kind of looked at it from different angles and then came to a consensus. Even if you've got a requisition from a vendor that may have multiple line items, once those are all broken out, there is a need for a master asset record because there may be a short shipment, there may be some stuff that didn't arrive, there may be some you know, issue back and forth. This right here is a requisition, so that's the first part that they would do. They'd come in and put the, the items in, and then once they did that, basically, they can fill out whatever information they have. Just like hit the ground running, it's the best thing in the world. We have world class file maker uh, developers, uh, instructors, world class outside file maker instructors, uh, doing all kinds of process management, project management, marketing, business management. It's it is it's just unbelievable, incredible. Let's do it.